What is up YouTube? Alex here from Mojave Repeater and today we have a very special video for you. Now, if you want to see more Starlink content and you aren't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we're going to be doing a lot of tactical type employment videos with this Starlink satellite dish. Now, what we're going to be doing today is talking about what Starlink is, unboxing it, and showing you a quick setup video and speed test. And then we're going to also discuss why I bought this thing and where it fits into your comm plan and how the Starlink works in general as a system. So a lot of people have asked me why I bought a Starlink. They've asked, does my home internet suck? Or, you know, is it slow? Did, it, did I buy this for the speed? Well, the answer is really no to any of those things. So this is a Starlink RV kit, meaning that I have portability. I can bring it around to different locations in the US and still have service anywhere. So the real reason I bought this thing is for the flexibility that it gives me in my comm planning. We travel to different locations for courses and some austere environments where there might not be internet service. So the reason I purchased the Starlink and where I think it fits into your comm plan is the ability to provide the network in an austere environment and location. Whether that may be for you know, those of you who do search and rescue or if you just have a cabin somewhere um, you know, but the ability to also travel with this thing is very important. Okay. And it also adds a layer of resilience to your comm plan because this system is running off of a low earth orbit satellite constellation and using KU and KA band transmissions. So, you know, it's creating variability in your pace plan to where you have a more resilient system because you have that additional layer of you know, resilient means of communication. All right, so now that we talked a little bit about why I bought Starlink and where it fits in with you, um, we're gonna get right into the unboxing. So here is the package that the Starlink RV comes in. I'm just gonna turn it on its side. Now opening it up, you have some plastic pieces here and you're gonna get a stand. This is the router that comes with the Starlink. And you're gonna get the dish itself. Um, additionally, there is a power cable for the router. And then this 75 foot data cable which plugs into the back of the router as well. All right, so now that we've unboxed our dish, I'm gonna go through some simple setup tips and just show you a quick speed test versus my home internet. To set up the Starlink, what you're first gonna do is start with the router. Now you're gonna tip the router up and on its end, you're gonna plug in the data cable into the left-hand side. In the middle here, you're gonna go ahead and plug in the power cable and then turn it over. Once you get your Starlink router plugged in and set up, you're gonna jump right into the iPhone app. So the first step here is to hit Start Setup. And then you can check for obstructions, but we already have it placed, so I'm just gonna say I have a location. We've already plugged in. Now we can simply connect to our Starlink via the Wi-Fi network that it creates. So now here within my list of Wi-Fi networks, I'm gonna see Starlink, so I'm gonna select that. And then once it connects, I can create my network. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the details. Once I enter the details for my network, I'm gonna click create and then reconnect to the Wi-Fi network using the new network name and password that I just developed. Now that I've connected to the network that we just created, my Starlink is gonna go ahead and enter the boot mode and it might take a few minutes to get it booted up. 
Once your Starlink finds the satellite cloud and connects, you're going to see a screen that says Setup Complete, and you can just select Done. So now this dashboard gives you a little bit of information about your Starlink and some basic functions that you can accomplish with it, like checking the speed of the network and changing the password and stuff like that. So now what we're going to do is just do a basic test of the speed of my home internet versus the speed of the Starlink network. All right, so we're on speedtest.net connected to my home internet. We're just going to go ahead and run this test and see how it turns out. As you can see right off the bat, I have really good download speed on my home internet service provider. And the upload speed is pretty good as well with a very low ping. All right, so now I'm gonna to connect to the Starlink Wi-Fi and we're gonna see how it compares to my home internet. Running the test again. So now a couple things to note on this page. So I am on the Starlink RV system which is gonna have a little bit of slower speeds as compared with the residential device. And that's okay because I am perfectly happy to trade a little bit of speed for the flexibility that something like Starlink RV provides. And you know, in the future, they can always release a software update that allows me to get more speed out of the system. So, you know, comparable upload speeds and good enough download speeds for what I'm gonna be doing with this device. All right, so now that we've gone through the setup for the Starlink, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how it works. So Starlink is a system of satellite dishes, low earth orbit satellites, as well as ground stations and POPs or point of presence data centers to connect you to the wider internet. So the way that it works is you're gonna have your computer connected to your Starlink device at one end. Now this device becomes your transmission piece to get out to the network, right? It's going to connect to the low earth orbit cloud or constellation via a KU or K KA band uplink and downlink. So it's sending that transmission up to the low earth orbit cloud to the Starlink satellites and then those satellites are then transmitting down to a ground station. And the ground station is connected to a point of presence data center via a fiber optic link. And then from there, your, your data is then transmitted out to the wider internet. Okay, so if you're attempting to access any website, for example, your transmission is gonna go from your computer to your Starlink device that request is then gonna go up to the satellite cloud and come down to a ground station, then find the nearest pop or point of presence, and then go out to the wider internet. As I mentioned earlier, this path and, and the way that the Starlink connects you to the network is so important because now you don't have to rely on something like, you know, your home internet, which is cable or fiber. You don't have to rely on something like LTE to connect you to the network. So you can provide services to your users via this KU and KA band link, which is very resilient and very flexible. So the way that I see something like this employed, for example, is within a command center, having a server hosted behind a Starlink, and then having clients in other locations connecting back to that server via a, another Starlink device. Um, or additionally, they could connect through LTE or some other means of connecting to the internet. So, you know, this device gives you a lot of flexibility and resilience in your pace plan and the ability to provide data services to your users, you know, as another layer on top of your radio, your two-way radio communications. Now, Starlink is not the only 
satellite communication system that are that is available to everyday citizens. There are other options like Iridium, for example. Iridium makes hotspots and push-to-talk satellite phones. So you can add that you know, additional layer to your PACE plan, but I want you guys to be thinking about these things as you kind of develop your communication system to add another layer on top of just two-way voice radio comms. So that just about wraps up this first look at the Starlink device. Um, as far as my initial impressions are concerned, you know, do I think this is something that could provide value to you? I do. You know, this is a battle-tested piece of hardware that's being used on the ground in Ukraine right now um, that you can get your hands on for a very low investment, less than $1,000, and you can have a piece of hardware that can provide you the ability to connect to the network in an austere environment. So I think that you know, this tool can be very useful for small groups. Um, you'll get one of them, get multiple, and add that additional layer to your pace plan. So if you like this video and you like what I had to say about the Starlink, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna be releasing more content with this device in the future and more about communications in general. So you know, if you like this, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below and tell me what you think we should cover in our next videos. But other than that, thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next one.